Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be a full face talk through drugstore makeup tutorial. More aimed for a prom look. I'm going to go a little kind of glam on the eyes, but remember you can switch it out to any eye look that you want. I wanted to do like a full prom video hair makeup dress, but time is just flying by and I know that some of you already had prom, so I wanted to get this video up ASAP. If you're not going to prom, this is just going to be a full face drugstore makeup tutorial and remember you can switch the eyes out to anything that your little heart desires um, I tried to be festive for the prom video by wearing this very sequinty shirt <laughs> but this hair this hair does not say prom <laughs> So a lot of you enjoyed the full face talk through makeup tutorial I put up about two weeks ago. If you missed it, I will link it in the bottom bar. <coughs> bottom bar. I will list it in the bottom bar. This is going to be kind of the same exact thing. We're just going to work more with drugstore products. So I've already primed my skin. Um, so I'm going to, no, 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 no. I've already moisturized my skin. We're going to move on to priming our skin. And for that, I'm gonna use the L'Oreal Revitalift Miracle Blur. This is the oil free one. Um, the other one is more of a white consistency and this one is clear. So I'm just going to put this in my, what I feel are like problematic areas. This is just going to fill in your pores, kind of take away any oiliness that you have on your face. My face may look extra oily, but that's just because I moisturized it beforehand. I'm like to put it on my cheek areas, like this little triangle, triangular. I can never say triangular when I first try. I don't know. A little on the forehead and a little on the chin. This isn't my favorite drugstore primer, but it is the one that I had here with me, so it's the one we're gonna use. It's just a little, it says it's oil free, but it's just a little greasy feeling in my opinion. Let that soak in for a sec. I'm so nervous to do my eyebrows because I'm not going to use my Anastasia pencil. <laughs> okay, so for foundation, I'm going to kind of mix these two together. This is the Maybelline Fit Me. This is the Matte and Poreless. And then this is the Jordana Complete Coverage, Maximum Coverage, 2-in-1 Concealer Foundation. Um, I think this one may be a little too tan for me, so I'm going to mix it with a little bit of a lighter foundation. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of the Jordana one on my hand and then pour a little bit of this matte and poreless. The matte and poreless is in the color 310, which is sun beige. Um, but as you can see, my neck is more tan than my face, so we're trying to go with matching that. I'm going to just pop a little bit of this out onto my hand as well. Mix the two together with my finger, and then I'll apply it with my finger as well. Well, I'm just going to dot it all over my face. I have so much laundry to do. Side note. Uh, 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 that's just what I'm thinking about. So I am going for a more full coverage foundation look because this is aimed at like a prom tutorial and I like a full coverage look when I know I'm going to be having my picture taken just because flash and all that. So this is going to be a more full coverage look and yeah <laughs> so once we have it all on I'm just going to take a damp beauty blender and blend it out um, I have used the matte and poreless before and it's pretty decent I don't know if it is so much matte it didn't feel like a super matte foundation but we'll see so I'm just going in pouncing motions with a beauty blender. If you don't have a beauty blender, if you don't want to shell out the 20 bucks for the beauty blender, you can use, I look so crazy right now, having a serious ass conversation. Um, oh, and I know, oh wait, let me keep going. I get sidetracked when I talk during tutorials. So I'm just dragging it down onto my neck to make sure the face and neck are blending with each other. It may look a little off at first, but by the time we're finished with powders and everything, it's usually hard to tell if the color is off a little bit. Um, what was I saying? Oh, if you don't want to shell out the 20 bucks for a beauty blender, you can just dampen a makeup wedge, the white makeup wedges that are available at all drugstores. You can dampen one of those and kind of give yourself the same effect. So I'm 
just really taking my time to pounce this product into my skin because we want to make sure we look great in our prom pictures. <laughs> I can hear Jeremy working out in the gym and he's, well not the gym, he's working out in our garage and he's listening to Rihanna, bitch better have my money. <laughs> So again, I'm just taking it down to the neck area, but I like those two together. I've been very into mixing foundations together, but I'm liking the coverage this is giving and the finish. Um, Jordana Cosmetics, you can find it like Walgreens or CVS. So once we have on our foundation. I like to move on to my brows. Again, this is just how I like to put my makeup on. I need some chapstick or something in my life. I like them to be moisturized. So next I'm going to fill my brows in and I'm a little nervous because I'm going to just try to fill them in with a brow powder because I didn't have any drugstore brow pencils laying around and I didn't want to go to the store to get one. <laughs> so I'm going to use the Salon Perfect Defining Brow Powder and this is in Universal Brown. Uh, I am going to use my Anastasia brush just because this is like my favorite little brow, eyebrow brush. Eyebrows? Yeah. Go. So, wish me luck. It does come with a brush, which is right here, but it seems a little thick. The this part of the brush and this is really really thin so I'm gonna start with the lighter color first and I'm just going to I like to round out the bottom of my brow first this feels so weird <laughs> come in to the front then I'm going to start bringing the arch up. And I'm alternating between the two. I am picking up a little bit of the dark and mixing it with the light for the end, or the end part of my brow. It does look a lot more natural though than the pencil. I have never ever filled my brows in with just powder because the this makes me nervous the this little guy I feel like I just don't have a lot of control over it but I mean it's not coming out so bad I just have to be careful what do you guys like to fill your brows in with pencils powder pomade okay so one brow complete oh girl I just filled my brows with powder. Hi! <laughs> that is an exciting day for me, if I do say so myself. And the brows are filled in with powder! Again, this was the Salon Perfect Powder, which you can find at like a Walmart or something like that. I meant to mention that when I was talking about the Salon Perfect nail polishes. Um, you can find it at Walmart. So next, we're going to go ahead and move on to eyes because that's the way I like to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my brow bone and I'm going to use these shadows from Milani and this one, these are their Bella Eyes Gel Powder Eyeshadow so they kind of have like a little bounce to them is the best way that I can describe it to you and this is in the color Bella Diamond and it's a highlighter shimmer color so I'm just going to pick it up on this little dual ended brush that I've had for my whole life <laughs> and I'm just going to use this to highlight underneath our brow. So I'm going a little heavier on everything because this is aimed more at people going towards prom and you're going to be taking a lot of pictures, so I'm just going a little heavier with everything. This is from Milani again. These are the Milani Fierce Foil Eye Shines and they're a glossy technology formulated especially for your eyes. So it is like a gel form. We're going to take this color here in the corner, which it doesn't have a name or anything. This one is just called number one. So I'm just going to take this with my finger. It's kind of like a iridescent pinky shade. I'm just going to take this and place it on my lid with my finger. Um, this is just going to be our base because we are going to place something right on top of it. Maybe I need to apply it with a brush. 
when I double tapped it with my finger, it all came off. So I'm going to try with a brush. It is kind of messy. I don't, I don't know about this. It won't let me pick it up with a brush. So maybe you need to apply it with your finger. But when I went over it, I'm just kind of using it as the base. So I guess, oh, I need to rub it on there not tap so lesson learned really quick so if you rub it on there it'll stay but if you tap it on it wasn't having it so this is a little messy right now but don't worry we'll clean it up I just wanted some kind of sticky base for it to stick to but I don't know how much I would recommend those um, because they just kind of tapped off once you touch them. Right on the top of that, I'm going to take one of these NYX Ultra Pearl Mania, and this is in the color I have no idea because it doesn't say it on here, but it's kind of like a little light pink color. Um, and I'm just going to tap some of this out onto my hand because... Oh, okay, that was... You don't need that much, but... These are weird. Like, it's hard to get your product out. and Awkward. Um, and then I'm just going to take a flat brush and pick some of this up. And then tap this right over that uh, Milani 3D Gel Shine. And then again, I'm just going to pack this right on. So it'll be nice when you catch the light and reflect in pictures. And I'm using packing motions, so I'm picking up product and then I'm pushing it onto my lid, so I'm packing the color on. This is going to help with fallout one, and it's just going to give you the most pigmented color instead of sweeping it on. I'm just pushing the product into my lid. Now I'm going to go in with a small brush, like a definer brush, well not a super small one. So I'm going to go in with a Morphe brush and I have a brownish shadow. I'm going to start first with a lighter brown. So I'm just going to use this powder which is actually a face powder. It's a true match powder. It's going to be the color we use for our contour but I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this to go in the crease. And I'm using a really light hand and as you can see I have, I'm holding the brush pretty far back on its back here just so that everything is nice and light handed. I'm not going all the way over I'm kind of stopping right underneath my brow and if you pull off some of the pigment don't worry we'll go back in and touch all that up at the end. So again I'm just using a really light hand here. I just needed a little bit of definition in our crease. I'm taking a clean brush and just going into this crease to diffuse this color and get rid of any harsh lines we may have created. And like I said, if you're pushing off that um, pigment, don't worry about it. And then I don't know if you guys watched my other full face tutorial, but I say in that video that I don't really like my eyeshadow pretty much ever until I'm done like until I have my liner on and everything and then it just really comes together but at this stage I'm like ugh, blend 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 <laughs> so we'll go back in and define this crease a little more after we throw on our mascara liner and all that on so moving on I'm going to go ahead and do some liquid liner but first I'm just gonna curl my lashes no first I'm just going to throw a little bit of mascara on this really helps as a guide for me when I'm doing my liquid liner I can do it without putting mascara on first I just think it helps especially if you have difficulty doing your liquid liner first practice makes perfect I promise you just practice 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 and you'll get your liquid liner I've been doing liquid liner for a long time and even I still mess up at it so just keep practicing if you want to wear that wing liner look. 
But try putting on a little mascara first. I really help. I really feel like it helps like the guideline of where your liner needs to go. Um, and also try to stabilize your elbow when doing liquid liner too. When I first started doing liquid liner, if I had my elbow resting on the table or something, it was a lot easier for me to get my line on and popping. I'm first going to use the Maybelline Line Stiletto. I love this. It's a felt tip liner. You have a lot of control of the brush. And then I go in with a more classic liquid liner to really get that point out like I want it to. Because I can't get the point how I like because this is kind of a thick liquid liner. So I like to give it a little tug here. Just to help draw this line out here and then draw it back in we have something like this and then fill in your little triangle I'll just leave it like that as it is and then I'll start at the front to come in and connect the whole thing together and then fill in any any gaps you see and then I'll go in with like I said a classic liner and this is the NYX matte liquid liner and I'll just use it to pull my wing out. Like that. And then I go over the whole thing. And then, voila! A liquid line. A line of liquid. Now we have two lines of liquid. For lashes, I'm going to use these spiky lashes because I like a little spiky lash. These are Ardell 385s. I have a couple of these, so like I have like six pairs because once I see I see a lash that I like, I'll just buy a bunch of them and keep them. So these might have been Halloween lashes or not because I feel like I got these during Halloween time and then I saw them again after Halloween. Um, so, I don't know. My favorites, drugstore ones, are always Ardell lashes. I love the Glamour Wispies, the Glamour 113s, these 385s. I like the 206 that they have. If you are able to find these lashes, just know that they do have a thicker band on them. Like I was talking about my favorites. Um, it is a little harder to apply when the band is thick. You just have to finagle it a little more. I like to stick them in a circle like this so that they're more shaped to my eye because I have more of a rounded lid instead of a more straight lid. So I just like to, if I have a thick band like this, I just like to pull them off before I put glue on them and round them out like that. And they just stick together because they already have a little bit of adhesive on them from sticking on to this guy. Remember to just let your lash have some time. Don't put the glue on and then stick it right on your eye because you're going to have trouble with that. You might end up gluing your eye shut. I've done that before. So just give it a little second, 15, and it'll make your lash a lot easier to put on. You want to try to get it as close to your natural lash line as possible and try to actually get it stuck on your eyelid and not stuck to your lashes, which I do more than I'd like to admit. Um, but that's because uh, when you remove it, if it's stuck to your lashes, you're most likely going to pull out a lash when you do it. So just try to get it on your actual eyelid. Like, I swear I can always have staring contests with people and not blink. Unless I'm trying to put my lash on. Then I want to blink like crazy. I don't understand it. Like I said, these are a little harder to work with because they are thicker. They just want to do their own thing. But... If you stay on top of them, they'll do what you want them to do. So then I just like to go in and squeeze them together, like squeeze my natural lashes to the falsies, and then push them up so that they're not like straight out. And then now we have a lash. <laughs> and a recommendation, take lash glue with you in your little handbag when you're going places because there's nothing in my opinion, worse than having a corner of your lash pop up and you don't have lash glue on you. It's like, for real? So take lash glue with you just in case, especially if you're wearing a thicker band lash like this, it's most likely gonna pop up on you. <laughs>
lashes are on now I'm gonna go back in and work on the eyes a little bit before we do any of the concealer or anything because I don't want anything to fall into our concealer so I'm gonna go back into with on our eyes and I'm gonna start with this darker shade and a really small fluffy brush this brush is a brush that is just like a brush like this except it is way smaller so that you can be really precise with it I love this little brush you are just this is the best brush ever. It is a Sigma E36. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this Milani. This is a matte shade, and this is in brownstone. Tap off the excess, and then I'm going to come in to the crease. Kind of taking it to where the point of our uh, wing liner is. And like I said, I'm not going all the way over into my eye. I'm kind of stopping right here. So I'm not bringing the shadow all the way in. I'm taking it up. Again, taking it to about where the wing ends. And then up to the brow. And then I'm just going to take the same brush that we're using before, it has no uh, product on it, and then just come in and blend that out. Not really blend it out, I'm just softening the line above the crease. I'm kind of doing circular windshield wiper motions. Like I'm going back and forth, but I'm also rolling the brush in little circles. I'm going to go back in, if I can find that little jar of pigmentness. Where did it go? It's over here. Like, I like these little pigments, I just think it's such a bad packaging for this little pigment. I can stick my brush in here and pick some up. And then we're going to go in and just pack this right back on top. And then again, just push it into your lid. It's going to help prevent the fallout, and it's just going to give you a better pigmentation of color. And I alternate going back and forth of packing color onto the lid, and then going into the crease color with the dark brown, um, because you kind of want them both to stand out on their own. So I don't want to lose any of the brightness on the lid, but I also don't want to lose any of our crease color. So I just keep going back and forth, alternating, blending color out, packing color on. Um, but it is a lot easier to see what's happening on your eye once you have your lashes and your liner on, if you're going to wear a liner. So that's why I just like to go in like as a rough draft with my eyeshadow and then really go in and do the detail work once everything else is on. Grab a little more pigment, pack that on, and then we can move on to concealer and highlighting and the fun stuff. Um, you are going to have to touch up your liner though because it's got a bunch of pigment on it. I'm liking how that is looking so far. I think when you're dancing and in the lights, it'll look great. So now we can go ahead and move on to concealer. Ding! So the concealer I'm going to use is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, which I think this is a great concealer. I've been using it regularly since I discovered him back in my drawer. And the color he is in is in... Oh my, light. So I like to use my concealer for highlighting and concealing, so that's why I go to the extreme with it. But I like to pull mine down from the corner of my eye all the way down to the corner of my nose, and then go up 
to about the corner of my eye. This is just a more efficient way of covering your dark circles underneath your eye. I mentioned this in my other video that it's better than if you were to just conceal just your under eye circle. This would make it kind of stand out a little more if you were to just conceal under this part of your eye. So that's why I go through and conceal like this in the triangle motion. So then I'm just going to blend out with my finger at first. You're just going to push the product into your skin. Don't use any kind of sweeping motions or anything like this because you're just going to one, remove your foundation that you have underneath and you're going to kind of remove your concealer that way as well. So by tapping it into your skin, you're going to get the fullest coverage you can and your product is actually going to stay there. You're not going to wipe it all away. So I just like to tap out with my fingers first and then go in with the more pointy end of the beauty blender and really get in there and blend everything away. Again, I'm still using tapping motions though because we want it to stay. And I'm not going to take it all the way to back here. I'm just going to stop right here. So it is just a, a little triangle shape on your face. Get right up next to that wing. Like that. I'm gonna get a little fancier and I'm gonna take the Magic Illumi from L'Oreal and this is in the color Fair and I'm gonna use this here for a little highlight action. A little fanciness. I'm not gonna blend out with my finger, I'm just gonna use this right here and tap that out. Into the other side. Tap 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 tap. I actually, oh, it's hard to talk. Like, right? <laughs> I just like to bring that underneath my nose as well. Now, the only thing that I'm going to use that's not drugstore related is just a little bit of the Makeup Forever HD, and just to set underneath my eyes because I couldn't find. Um, any kind of drugstore concealer or any kind of drugstore setting powder that I want it to use. So I'm just going to tap a little bit on this big fluffy brush. Tap out with my beauty blender, any creasing that might have occurred, and then come in here and just set the under eye concealer really quickly. Like that. So then to set my whole face, I'm going to use this powder from L'Oreal True Match and it's in W5 Sand Beige. Now, I don't know if this is a powder foundation, but it kind of looks like one to me. And uh, if I'm going for a more full coverage look, and I know I'm gonna have my picture taken, I like to set my foundation with a foundation powder because it's just going to give you an even more flawless looking face. So I'm just going to load up my brush and then push it into my skin. So now moving on to bronzer, I'm gonna use the L'Oreal True Match in Coco? Yeah, Coco. Coco. I'm going to start with just a small brush first to define where I want my contour. Which will be about there. Um, if you don't know where your contour lines are, you can pretty much feel where a hollow space is in your cheek. Um, but if you don't have a really, if you really can't feel it, you can just go from the top of your ear. And some people will go all the way to their mouth, but I don't really have that face shape. So I kind of just stop where I kind of just stop where my smile line would be. And there I like to just kind of give it a little like round it up. So it's like this. See what I'm saying? Like around it. Again, just try to use a light hand so that you don't displace anything that's underneath. And when you're contouring, try to keep everything that you're blending above 
your original contour line. So you want to make sure you're blending up here and not so much down here. So that's why when I, I blend, I'm always just pulling the product above the contour line so we don't mess it up. Because we're not going to bake or anything like that, we're just going to leave it as is. So just keep your brush above that line and pull upwards. I'm going to go in with a little bit of a thicker contouring brush. This is from Real Techniques. Pick up some product, tap off your excess, and again, you're going to stay above that line. We're just going to thicken up that contour. And then we're going to bring it up onto our temples. Pushing it back into our hairline. temples so I have kind of a pointier chin so I just like to throw a little bit of contour powder on there and then right underneath our jaw just so it looks like we have a strong jaw the blush I'm going to use is from okay just throw yourself on the floor is from Milani as well and I'm gonna just do uh, this one this is the Romantic Rose Powder Blush, and this is a Sonia Kashuk brush, and I love this brush for applying, I love this brush for applying blush. So I just like to pick up a lot of product on my brush, usually in general, and then just tap off any excess. You can just see the powder flying right out of the brush when you do it. So when that stops, you're good to go. I give it a little smile, and then we're just going to put this on our apples. And then I like to take a stippling brush, everything is falling off this table, and just blend the two together. So that they just melt into each other. For highlight, I'm going to use this same little um, pigment, so I'm just going to pop some out onto the back of my oh my god I try to put out such a little bit and then a big ball comes out I'm gonna use this real techniques brush I'm just going to run my brush in it get as much of the excess powder off as we can and then very lightly put this on the highest points of our cheekbones like that I'm just using a really light hand to get this highlight on there but I think it works. Be I might start using this as a highlight too because it's gorge. And lightly, gentle hand, apply this highlight. I like to do just a little on the tip of my nose here. And then we can apply it to our Cupid's bow. Then you want to take your stippling brush again oh. <laughs> and come in and just melt them together. It'll pull off any excess powder or any excess product you might have on your face too. But that is a nice highlight. Kind of diffuse it on the lip, it was a little heavy. Now we can move back to the eyes and I'm going to go in with just an angled brush and the same color which again is brownstone from Milani and this is going to go right underneath our lower lash line and I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way over not all the way taking a pencil brush now to just smoke this out a little bit for the inner corner so I'm going to take the matte one first, which is a satin matte, and this is going to go right in here, connecting it with that brown on the bottom, just so that our eyes are nice and big and bright. Like that. And then we can just throw a little bit of mascara on our lower lashes, well, a lot of it. Your lower lashes, lots of love, couple coats, because we have such a heavy lash going up on top. We don't want to leave these guys out. Next, all we have to do is the lip, but I think I'm just going to go with a nude lip for this. Um, so this is Milani, no, this is L'Oreal's Ferris Nude. 
and I'm just gonna run that all over the lips. And then, of course, I'm going to top it off with my favorite NYX gloss. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with this NYX gloss, it's ridiculous. And somebody told me, somebody tweeted me the names of them, and this one is called Fair Lady. So we're just going to top that off. I like a glossy lip. We talked about this last time. <laughs> First time in a long time I didn't line my lips. <laughs> and then because we have a ton of stuff on our face, you can use one of these Evian spray bottles to kind of use it as a setting spray. So I'm just going to... <sighs> just kind of sets all your makeup and lets like all the powders and everything just melt into your skin so you don't look like you just have a bunch of powders stacked onto your face. A little close-up shot. Um, I, I just, it's hard for me to do close-up shots alone because I'll zoom the camera in and then the lighting will get thrown off and then I'll zoom out and the lighting will be totally different and it just frustrates me so much. I need to start making Jeremy come in here and help me film these videos. Hmm. So that is it for this drugstore face. I think it came out beautifully. I would totally wear this to prom and I even feel like this is super similar to how I did wear my makeup to prom. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I love drugstore makeup. It is just as beautiful as high-end makeup. It's just when I got a little bit of extra change in my pocket, I started venturing out into the high-end world and then it just stuck to me in. But I am a true and true drugstore lover and I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed filming it for you guys let me know videos you want to see down below um, I probably won't have any videos till I get back from New York I don't have anything else to say except I love you guys thank you so much for watching and until next time I will talk to you guys soon Bye.